Simon. And I'm Jeff. Jeff. Simon. Number one selling video game, at least, I actually don't think it is anymore. Dragon Quest. It's not Dragon Quest. Boy, that would be crazy. (laughs) It sells good in Japan. I think just nowhere else. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Well, I think it was, like, a little bit too early. Wasn't Dragon Quest, like, early, early? Isn't that, like, early 90s? I mean, are we talking just the one game or the series? Oh, there's a... I only know the one game. Oh, yeah, no, I got the last game that came out. I don't remember what it's called. Dragon Dragon Quest. Return of the Dragon? (laughs) Something like that. Hmm. No, because if they're on, like, Series 7, they've already gone through all the basic ones, you know, like Return of the Dragon, Father of the Dragon, Revenge of the Dragon. Uh, son of the uh, Dragon. Son of the Dragon. <laughs> exactly. It's a two-part game. It's just a two-part game. Yeah, and then you also, yeah, it's a series. They went off, it's like Crystal Chronicles came out of Final Fantasy, but it, they also had Crystal Chronicles 2. So in Dragon Quest, Son of the Dragon, and then Grandson of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the uh, the naming structure for all of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, this is exactly right. This is they have the same naming structure as the Fast and the Furious movies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I rag on them a lot, and I would like people to know. Excuse me. I genuinely like the Fast and Furious movies. I think they're great. Uh, and if you haven't seen them, you should watch them in the correct order and anyone can find the correct order. (laughs) And you can just take a guess because none of them have numbers. (laughs) Well, the only one you're confused about is where does Tokyo Drift fit in? But once you watch Tokyo Drift, you know where it fits in because there's a character (laughs) that shows up that it has like no, no reason for showing up unless you've seen the two movies that go around. Tokyo oh, Drift. I see. Yeah. So watch all of them randomly and then construct the timeline <laughs> on yeah. your, you know, uh, whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. Watch all of them again in the correct order. Exactly. It. it uh, Fast and the Furious is like a real life memento where. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, I was going to say it was The Legend of Zelda, but I actually don't think it is The Legend of Zelda anymore. I think someone else beats it out. I think quite a few games beat it out. Because I'm thinking well, like... do we want to talk about one of those other games? Because this one sounds bad then. If <laughs> this everyone one sounds else likes like other <laughs> stuff more. I, uh, uh, I don't. Because I don't know what those games are. Uh, I'm like... I'm like... Anyway, it used to be like one of the best selling games of all time was Ocarina of Time. Mm. Uh, but again, my like frame of reference for things is pre- doesn't go beyond the n64 well it doesn't go beyond like 2008 like mm. i i have no idea what is occurring at any moment in time period You're still <laughs> still catching up through the 2000s uh, I exactly see. exactly that's the, that's the issue i have uh like uh know the decade book for uh uh the 20 teens obviously uh and so I'm still trying to catch up. I don't know what's going on. Right. I well, really... I mean, spoiler alert. Uh, I'm 2016 still to 2020 are going to be pretty rough. I mean, are you sure? Because I just reached the the housing crisis, and that was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get much better. Well, that's, I mean, you know, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> really. Anyway, Legend of Zelda. Uh, this was suggested... Uh, which this is like our eighth episode that was suggested by my sister Claire. Uh, mm-hmm. hey, she comes up with good suggestions. Uh, that's true. And she specifically suggested the masks for Majora's Mask. And I, 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 you know me, I'm never about constraining myself to uh, <laughs> logic. Or... Yeah, I was gonna say logic or coherent thought or <laughs> yeah, you know, anything like that. Yeah, reading my writing is bananas because it's all over the place. Um, anyway. Like physically, you can't stop them. There's so many post notes. <laughs> so many post notes. Which, I mean, our. our <laughs> that one isn't policy. actually a joke, though. <laughs> that, one, <laughs> that, one, that one is we were not allowed to write things on post notes, and yet my entire <laughs> desk was covered in post notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. 
I just, I wish I still had post-it notes. That would actually help me out a lot. Um, anyway, it is, uh, so people who don't know, it's a video game, okay? Right. It is not only a video game, but it is a series of video games uh, Ooh, that were like... Fancy. Yeah, fancy, I know, right? They were they were transformative. Uh, there's all, you, you look into it, there's a whole bunch of ways that Legend of Zelda has really, really changed the way games were made when they were first made. And they kind of have been at the forefront uh, of like game development sometimes. <laughs> Let's yeah, just like, really, <laughs> really groundbreaking work on the CDI. <laughs> well, I was, well, yeah, CDI. I was also going to say Phantom Tracks wasn't really that groundbreaking. They were really just <clears> like, <throat> what if we took this game people really liked on the sea, but put it onto trains? <laughs> <laughs> people like trains, right? Just as much as yeah, they like totally. sailing. <laughs> it's just like sailing, except on rails. Uh, but in general, it follows the same kind of structure, which is that there's a, a, a boy named Link. He's generally between like nine and 16 years old. Uh, and the, uh, the female protagonist leaves, is either captured or runs away or disappears or gets lost. And he has to go and find her and he goes on an epic quest and he like gathers items he grows stronger uh and he fights bosses he f- goes through dungeons and he kills things yeah like yada. every nine to 16 year old boy just like every yeah like and not only what's bananas about the story is that like it's like normal for kids to do this like every every <laughs> game they're like yeah you're the hero of time there's been like 50 other of you <laughs> also i lost all of my chickens can you please bring them back Yes. Also, I'm allergic to the animal that I husband. <laughs> husband? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the basic story is there's a princess, there's a hero, you have to go fight evil baddies, you have rescue the princess. And there's like various changes on that form. Uh the only uh, but but most of them are that that way. Yeah. Um yeah, is there anything you'll want to add? You've played you've played these games, right? Uh, I mean, a little bit. I mean, you knew about the CDI but... game, which makes me think that, yes, you have played this game. <laughs> uh, no, I just know about bad games. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Is that the, is that the Wand of Gamelon? Uh, there's the another Gamelon? one, too. Wand of Gamelon is one of them, and then there's something where you're... Shoot, I don't know. There's a second one. Yeah, it's there's a whole bunch of really bad ones. They make no sense. Mm-hmm. Anyway. There's a uh, BS The Legend of Zelda. There's a Super Famicom uh, game too. I think that doesn't Is include. It? Yeah, yeah. It does. It's uh, doesn't include Link. It's got two random people in it that make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, part of this game, we're gonna be jumping around between games. I think because I'm assuming they're all in the same universe. Uh, I'm not gonna get into timelines. I think so. Yeah, the timeline is crazy, but I do think they're all in the same universe. Yeah, if you yeah, they all are in the same they all happen in the same world, just at like different iterations of the world. If that makes sense. That's like the best way yes. to explain it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh if you want to know Brian David Gilbert did a thing for Unravel and he explains it all. That's kind of why I know there's a super Famicom version. It's pretty good. Anyway, mm-hmm. so the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, is the Majora Masks Masks. Right. Uh, so Majora, Majora's Mask is a game where you collect masks that all have powers, or most of them have powers to them. Some of them are just like, you look cool. Um, <laughs> I think only like two You know, masks. Like, every, like every mask. Yeah, well, you actually, you don't even look cool, you just look like a different guy. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> uh, like, it's just someone else's face. Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, like, the big thing about this game was that it allowed you to put on masks that would transform you into the different creatures of uh, Hyrule, which is the land that Link inhabits. Like, I think it wasn't necessarily, like, the different creatures, but, like, a specific, discrete person. one character. Like, one yes. person, yeah. Yes, it was because you had to essentially like steal their soul once they when they died i think it was more they lent you the power of their soul 
or that i thought it was all stealing like i thought you lock because i think in the game it's like you lock away the darkness that's inside of them that's like poisoning mm. them in the mask something like that that could be it uh i have played that one like anyway but you play the song of healing you get a mask uh, it's mm, always mm-hmm. a song of healing so how do we think that works? I mean, it turns us into like a gore, like it's it turns us to a Goron, which is like a rock monster, a Zor, mm-hmm. which is like a anthropomorphic fish, fish monster. It's fish monster, yeah. I think like uh, Abe Sapien, because uh, if you mm-hmm. don't know Zoras, you sure or you don't know Legend of Zelda. Certainly, you must know Hellboy, <laughs> right? Uh, and or a or a Korok. I can't remember. Yeah. I think it's a Korok, but I might be Koroks might be the other ones. Anyway, uh, that's like a, a plant person. Mm-hmm. It is not a Korok. It is something else. Anyway, so how do we think that works? What, what do we think is going on here? I think if we relate it back to, isn't there like a person who makes or controls these masks or something? Uh, there's a person who sells them, but... Uh, Oh, right. I think he sells and collects them. Yeah. Hmm. But is not some crazy, mad, all-powerful wizard. No, but, well, well... Trapping souls into masks. He does kind of create them, because he teaches you the Song of Healing, which is the which is the song that locks away the, the soul into the mask. So that's... Mm. Uh, we could go that direction, like, what is the Song of Healing first... And then that might and then us... work from that. Yeah, I think that's a good starting place. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, so... so I guess we'd have to figure out how how is you know a song affecting. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, it would be like the person's soul because you turn into them with the mask. The person's essence, and and it's the song itself because it can be played on different instruments, and it mm. has the same effect. Because originally it's played on a piano. Uh, and then it's played on ocarina. It's played on drums, horns, and a guitar throughout mm-hmm. the entire game. So, so um, hmm. it's it's hard. So, like you know, we got yeah. sound. It's like it's it's you know, I'm I'm being way more analytical than I usually am. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's got, weird. <laughs> it's it you know, it's waves in the air. It's got energy to it. Um, it's got them good vibes. It's got them good good, good healing good vibes. Vibes. I, I feel like we might have to like cr- come up with a uh, underlying universal uh, cause for this. Right. Like I don't think that this could be in our world. <clears throat> I think it has to be in a world where like where like creatures think. No, no, it doesn't make sense. This is really tough. This is how yeah, far harder. Yeah, like I was um. <laughs> Maybe we should have uh, ramped our way up into this one after into we got masks. some uh, after we got inertia some... behind us. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I should have just like been like, "Oh, this one's easy. Let's try this." You know, transforming <laughs> into various monsters. So what? But what That's I'm thinking. Good start. <laughs> what I'm thinking is, you know, wh- like what is the mask? Is the mask part of the creature that you are taking it from, or is it just like? I think it would, like, have to be, because the mask would have to come from somewhere. So you think... I Unless think it, everyone has, like, their own mask that is just also their face. Oh, yeah, I agree. I think it is... It has to be, like, their their face. Um, mm-hmm. What if the... What if it's, like, uh, uh, like an ultrasound? So, so the, the Song of Healing like vibrates the mask off of them well i was thinking not vibrating this mask off them but it's able to like make a copy of them like it's like sending out information and getting information back but it doesn't necessarily make a copy of them yet or at all though because they just because they do cease to be otherwise you're right maybe it just obliterates them maybe it's just (laughs) i mean maybe that's like what the song is like the song uh hits like resonant frequencies with people's masks and they vibrate off of them into link's hands okay okay so i like that i like the idea that like every creature in this world is just essentially wearing a mask like like that's how creatures are differentiated right 
It's just the mask they're wearing. Boy, that's very uh, uh, grim. Yeah, I mean, uh, but like not only grim, but it's like cynical almost. Like the the thing that makes them all unique is their their masks. That they're <laughs> is wearing. the facade that they show everybody? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So 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 what what do we think causes the transformation then? So because because maybe it is maybe it's like you know in this world there's like a a, a parasite that uh, that will take over a, a collection of like everyone's a lichen essentially like mm-hmm. again we're doing lichens they're just so useful they're weird and useful <laughs> right but like maybe like that's what that is that's what that hard outer shell is is it's the it's the it's like the parasitic or like the the fungal component to the to the person to the creature to the hyrulean mm-hmm. and the song of healing you know yeah vibrates it off and the person just dies like they just go away now is like can anyone else in the world wear the mask yeah cuz the what's his face is wearing majora's mask yeah oh yeah uh, skull kid skull kid's wearing majora's mask yeah um hmm i i and like the mask takes over skull kid to be like you know a jerk that throws the moon on a planet yeah, it corrupts right. Them. That's yeah. that's what it is. That's what it is. And the other masks don't corrupt Link. Uh no, but it could be that the other masks aren't. They just don't want to do that. Like they just probably don't. Like their their whole thing might be, mm-hmm. you know, turn the person into fish person because <laughs> fish people are like. There's certain scenarios where the first person is advantageous like where it's a niche like in that water they can fill. like in water or like <laughs> like plant people are far better at surviving in places where there's like you know a lot of predators because they can like do their stupid flower camouflage thing mm-hmm. uh or like gorons are really cold cold resistant and fire resistant so they they live on mountains with like volcanoes and ice uh, mm-hmm. so do we think like it's the masks that are the discrete people and like bodies are just, are just like organic puppets that they use. I think so. So I was thinking either that or everyone is a Hyrulean and mm-hmm. they've already been transformed, but I like your way better because it's, you know, there isn't like a secondary part to it. There isn't like mm. a, essentially everyone's just a, just like a, a meat puppet for this parasite. Mm-hmm. And, and some parasites are Hyrulean. Some parasites are Goronian. Hmm, that's not a word. They're Gorons. <laughs> uh, yeah. Goronians? Nah, I don't think it is. So no, nah, that doesn't feel right. Yeah. I don't think that there's a, a whatever that is, appellation for uh, Gorons. Mm hmm. But I like that idea, and all the song, all the song of of healing is doing is, and maybe it's not even like knocking it off the person. Maybe it's just like stunning the parasite, so that the parasite. <laughs> so falls Link off. can rip it off of the, uh, the body that it was inhabiting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and nobody knows what happens to the body. It just uh, without the parasite. Oh well, I mean, it's gruesome. They couldn't leave it on screen and <laughs> maintain its uh, e rating, you know, ten plus rating. I like, I think the, I, you know what, out of everything we've come up with, I think the ESRB rating system has probably <laughs> given us the most cop-outs. <laughs> right, I think so too. <laughs> like, it's just, you can't show it on, you like, can't show it on all, <laughs> the children. <laughs> can't show it in a video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I like this idea. Uh, well, so, so here's a, are we cool with that? I like this. I think so. So there are other masks in the game that don't do the transformation, though. Um, mm. Like one of them is a is called the bomb mask, and it and it might just be a, just a bunch of TNT that you strap to your face. <laughs> uh, and I am realizing that now that I'm like thinking about it, but uh, it it is a mask that you do strap to your face. It does explode and it doesn't kill you. Mm-hmm. So well, it's just shape charges. So we just think it's shape charges away from your face. Yes. <laughs> I like how I like how sometime in the history of the whatever the Great Plains or whatever Majora's Mask is set in, Clock Town, mm-hmm. uh, there there was a guy who's like like it's a mask maker 
who's just like, you know what? I have I have a bunch of shaped charges. I have a bunch of tape. <laughs> and I have like those like whatever they're called, the the Harley Quinn masks, and I'm just going to I'm just going to make a bomb mask, guys. And it's going to be <laughs> nope, the hottest. No one's going to stop me. I'm going to have a bomb mask. <laughs> yeah, this is this is what I am doing. Do not try and stop me. <laughs> Dude, we're not just whatever. <laughs> Do, okay, there was also another one I want to touch on was uh, the bunny hood. Right. Sounds uh, like it's not a mask. It's not a mask. It's a it's a pair of bunny ears you put on, and when you do, you run much faster and jump. I further. just got to dress for the job you want, you know? It gives you that bunny confidence. It's all psychosomatic. That's like yeah. Link, Link just like. It was all, it's all <laughs> now I can him. run real fast and yeah. do stuff. Yeah, it's all, it's all within them all the time, but. Uh, you know, he sold his soul to the devil, and the devil gave him, you know, rocks instead of magic rocks. Okay. I think that this is pretty good. Do we want to do... So, so there is Majora's Mask, but I guess we did explain that. Because Majora's Mask is not mm-hmm. a transforming mask, but it's just like a, a parasite that when it latches onto its host, uh, mm-hmm. causes, like, an enormous amount of aggression. And, and right. like, what's the word? For someone who's, like, has things of grandeur, delusions of grandeur? That's yeah, it. it causes to delusions, have delusions of grandeur uh so so we already touched on this too but <sighs> song of healing mm-hmm. um what do we think like there are other songs in the game as well and the song of healing we've kind of realized is like uh it's somehow like a paralysis or like uh something to these parasites mm-hmm. do what do we think it is that like the song of storms is or like the Goron Lullaby, which puts people to sleep, or like all the teleportation songs, how do they fit into that? Right. I think a lot of them could probably be explained away by like more mundane things, like, you know, the Goron Lullaby is just, you know, a real nice lullaby. It lulls <laughs> you to sleep. Um, or like it's got like really low waves and it like lulls your brain into being, uh, into sleeping. It's like hypnotic. That's the way I was thinking of Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, similar with the ones that like speed up or slow down time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The song of um, times. Yeah. I think there are the, like other ones. Song of storms sounds like it summons a storm. That oh, one yeah. would be harder. <laughs> well, but, but, but ironically, we have a thing called rain dances in the real world and they don't mm-hmm. summon storms. But people thought they did. So maybe the storming of storms is just he's playing long enough that a storm <laughs> that comes. That a storm along. comes. <laughs> yeah. So maybe it's really simple. I can uh, get behind that. I like that as an explanation. What, what about the songs that allow you to teleport? Hmm. Well, those are like around... No, the like places that you teleport to are like owl statues, no? Uh, either way, so in Majora's Mask, they're owl statues. In uh, Ocarina of Time, they are uh, plates. Uh, they're the temples. Mm. <clears throat> so you well, I was it, going to say, maybe one is just like summoning a big owl that brings you to its statues. Well, that's pretty much Song of the, the whatever it's called. Song of Wings, I think it is in the Majora's Mask, something like that. Song of Feathers. It do, pretty much Maybe. does that. It does that. Yeah, it summons mm. a big old bird. Bird teleports you. Uh, but right. that's not what happens in Ocarina of Time. No, summons big temple that flies you away. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> the sage comes and and carries you off. <laughs> Just hop on, Link. Yeah, Link. We're sages. <laughs> My name is something. I don't remember. <laughs> you couldn't come up with a, a name quick enough. I know huh? I know Sarah is the forest sage, but I can't I was trying to think of the old one that's a sage of light. Oh, oh, you're going with like the actual sage names. I thought you were going like I'm Tom <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Hyrulean named Tom <laughs> Yeah, Link. Yeah, just just hop right on my back. Don't worry about it. I'll just carry you right there. <laughs> just like chugging along <laughs> right I, I i mean yeah let's do it teleportation songs and it just takes so long that they just like it's like fast forwarding mm-hmm. like they just like you know that's what they're doing during the video game they're just fast forwarding through all the boring parts where link is being carried 
if you yeah that's the the trick now that we have uh screens with a higher refresh rate you can see all those scenes in between yeah but you know back when you had you know 30 hertz tube tv not you even see it. <laughs> 24 <laughs> fps yeah mm-hmm. yeah on a good day sometimes you can see the frames being buffered uh <laughs> Thank you, Banjo Tooie. That happens quite a bit in your game. <laughs> it's that's pretty dis- it's pretty horrible to see, actually. Anyway, okay, okay. So pretty much the songs are not magical. <laughs> like that's what we have decided. Link is yeah. just like in his own in his own mind. He is just like I. I am like I'm just gonna play this song. And, and it's just going to be a signal for, like, someone to pick me up. Or, like, it's hypnotic and people are going to go to sleep. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone's telling him he's, like, you know, the hero of time. He's going to save Hyrule. Of course he thinks he has all these powers. I mean, it really sounds like Link does have delusions of grandeur. Yeah, of course. How about this? What about the Song of Time, which allows you to go back and forth through time on top of... And it's a Majora's Mask. On top of the Song of Time, uh, not the Song of Time, but the Master Sword, allows you to travel through time in Ocarina of Time. Right. Um, hmm. I like how you act like, oh, yes, I forgot about this. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the main point to these two the games. The main mechanic. <laughs> well, I didn't get far in Ocarina of Time because dungeons were scary. And I yeah, didn't oh. play Majora's Mask. Queen Gama is terrifying. And if you thought, if you thought Ocarina of Time was scary, uh, uh, Majora's Mask is absolutely terrifying. It's horrific. Mm. It's an incredibly dark game for no reason. <laughs> oh, uh, um, so time travel. Hmm. Yeah. So there's also some weird things that that they do set up rules for their time travel, which I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, is it's causal. So so. If you are an adult and you go to the spirit temple and there's a block that is in your way, Mm -hmm. you leave, come back as a child, you can find your way around the block, get the block out of the way, and then when you come back as an adult, the block is gone. Right. So that makes a little bit more sense because that goes, like, you know, forward along the timeline. But then you have... Or I'm pretty sure, at least in Majora's Mask, you can deposit money in the bank and then, you know, go back to the beginning of the time frame, like three days or whatever, and that money is still in the bank. Is that... I thought you lost your money in Majora's Mask. Unless you deposit it in the bank. Oh. Huh. Yeah. It's really good bookkeeping, I guess. (laughs) It's just... (laughs) <laughs> such such good bookkeeping like auditing trails everything literally through <laughs> the changing of timelines right i mean that sounds almost like a doctor who character uh <laughs> mm-hmm. but i like i so I, I agree with you i think we could have these as two different mechanics because two different things cause these movements through time I think mm-hmm. the Ocarina of Time movement through time is just a straight arrow. It's it's not looping back on itself. All it's doing is it's taking the world at one point in time and then shifting it to a to a different point in time. So it's kind of like you have, okay. you have two tracks of like of time and you're just jumping between them, but you're still moving mm-hmm. forward. Because you have to go to the same one place. Yeah. To to do it right. Yeah. Hmm. And they're just like, it's almost like there's two universes and they're just causally related. Like where you affect mm-hmm. one part of one universe, you affect the other part of the other universe. Right. That makes, that seems kind of legit to me. You know, maybe, maybe not too legit to quit. <laughs> We're only half an hour through this episode, but. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's a decent, like, I don't know, probably more of a, I don't want to say starting point and like. <laughs> really commit to that but it sounds like a decent starting point for at least the one the one time thought of time travel yeah so in majora's mask you play the song of time you go back three days Mm -hmm. uh and you can't go back further than that for some reason 
because I feel like if I was Link, I would just you know like go back and not have Skull Kid steal <laughs> and my stuff. take the Majora's Mask from Skull Kid before he yeah. gets a chance to put it on. Um, maybe does it have something to do with the mask seller? Because you don't go back before you like had the the first mask taken off by them, right? True. Yes, you. That is true. And also when you're in the mass seller's room, time doesn't move forward. Mm. Uh, so maybe in that case, it's like a bubble mm -hmm. where everything inside the bubble it keeps on going back to the same time, the same like set point. Everything outside right. the bubble continues to progress as normal, mm -hmm. which I think makes it a little bit easier. And then everything that was outside the bubble when the time loop began remembers the time loop mm -hmm. it's, because it's 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 set point is outside of the bubble. Does that make sense? I think so. I mean, like everything that happens outside of that bubble, like is just going to like do its thing unless you affect it, right? The bubble around the mask seller is like just a constant point but i'm wondering like uh, hmm. why does like link remember all the iterations he's gone through and and i think it's because when he gets reset he wasn't in the original version so the resetting mm. just like doesn't reset him because it doesn't know what to do with him and so it just puts him back to where he first entered and that's it right well and that that point would be outside of the outside of the bubble so it's like, just like yeah, well, outside the bubble or back, like, that bubble is the zero. Oh, they, yeah, so back to zero. It just pushed him mm -hmm. back to, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if it, if it put him back to zero, he wouldn't remember the stuff. So it has to be outside the bubble, which is the mass hmm. seller's room. Right. Well, I mean, no one else remembers everything, which would be outside the bubble that is mass seller's room. So maybe it's if, oh, like, oh, oh, because I they see, were I in see. that bubble, they we're, we're can doing, see across those timelines. We're doing, yeah, two different things. I'm considering the yeah. bubble to be Clock Town and oh, not, I see. not the mass seller's room. Mm. So, like, everything within the bubble gets reset, but everything outside the bubble and the mass seller's room, I don't know, it's the Clock Tower, uh, doesn't mm -hmm. get reset. Oh, yeah, I was, you're right. I was thinking of it with the reverse, where, like, the just the uh mask seller in their room are like the only things that aren't reset per se so everything else around it gets reset and because you know link's time frame started in the bubble they remember what happened across the different adventures hmm. i like that better hmm well, I don't understand how, at that point in time, why does everything else get reset? So you're saying that he actually is going back in time, but that it, there's just a, a space outside of time. Right. That is just kind of linear. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I don't know how you would do that. Yep, neither do I. You would need, like, you would need, like, a pocket dimension or something like that. Like, like some place mm -hmm. that's outside outside of the normal bounds of the rules of the universe well i mean have you seen the mask sellers like animations <laughs> that dude is not of this universe it's it's true he's very creepy <laughs> uh, yeah you know that's really that's really tough mm -hmm. i want to say as i adjust myself on my chair i want to say uh, uh that because I like that idea. I like the idea that the entire world is being reset. Because mm -hmm. it, it's just really hard to figure out a mechanism for that. It's just really hard. So the thing what I'm thinking is, mm -hmm. is that the kind of the the causal loop, the causal direction mm -hmm. of the world is slightly offset, uh, so that if you are moving fast enough you could potentially move backwards in time okay uh can we use the energy created from the 
well, not created, but like given off in the collision of the very angry moon hitting the world to somehow like kickstart well, Link back. Well, see, that's what I'm thinking is that it it might not be that it it might not be so 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 you know you know causal cones. Sure, but for the, the, the listeners, go ahead and enlighten them. So there's a I think I've discussed this before because I I think they're very cool. Um, there's a cone that if you if you think of uh, like space, uh, like your x y z coordinates, mm-hmm. uh, in one direction, and then the time it takes you, it, then then the time as it's moving forward for you, uh, in another kind of direction, make that a Cartesian coordinate. Uh, mm-hmm. There is essentially you can only go so far in a certain amount of time. And that's mm. re- constrained by the speed of light. So yeah, what you can cause is only um, is only uh, 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 what you can reach within that time. Essentially, does it make sense? Mm. So yes, what I'm saying is that if you have a, the speed of light forwards through time much much faster than the speed of light backwards through time, which is not what happens in our universe. But, but I can... conveniently is exactly what happens in this one. In, in this in this universe, exactly. <laughs> it, it would mean that you could potentially move fast enough that you could go backwards in time. Because essentially time becomes space to you. Mm-hmm. So you move forward in space always, but you have to move backwards in time. And the thing I was thinking on top of that is, if that were true, instead of moving faster, all you actually need is a strong enough acceleration. Mm -hmm. And a thing that's going to cause a large acceleration is two massive, massive bodies being really close to each other and just having both their gravitational fields in the same proximate direction. Mm -hmm. Or having a very dense object very close to you so maybe the sun is also like a neutron star i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh this is this is one of those things that would be way easier to describe if i had a piece of paper <laughs> this was, was yeah we chose topic. a really good format with podcast huh yeah well i wasn't expecting on having to like pull pull that out i think it might be i might i might be wrong with that time might have to move faster backward or sorry light might have to move faster backwards than forwards but i don't remember which one is which um i'm even having difficulty keeping the cartesian coordinates straight in my head <laughs> but it's fine i think that that's what happens and i think it's that collision of the moon that causes mm-hmm. link to go back in time so he link is perpetually going back in time whether he actually wants to or not right. um until he stops the collision of earth and the moon mm-hmm that's what I think. Yeah, I think that's workable within the frame rate. Frame rate? It's the frame, frame rate. work. Yeah, oh. the frame rate of the game. Uh, within the framework <laughs> of the the universe that we 20, have. 24 FPS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that that, I think that, that works too. Um, you know what? If it doesn't, um, feel free to add. Leave me. a yeah. comment yeah. on the YouTube channel and or subscribe. The, or the Twitter and uh really help with the uh seo yeah that's the word acronym that's the acronym anyway (laughs) wow that was i think we did a pretty good job there yeah no we actually kind of did a lot better with it than i was expecting yeah that's the first time we've been able to do time travel that time travel is always tough Uh, yeah because it i mean it's it's impossible guys (laughs) sorry (laughs) well i mean Except for the one direction. Except for the yeah, well yeah, you could time travel in one direction. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I don't even think it's time. Tra- it's it's you're forced to go in that direction. It's it's yeah, that's still traveling. I guess it is. I've traveled it's... to a lot of places I didn't want to. <laughs> I was forced <laughs> to go to a lot of places. <laughs> I guess you're right. I I just feel like. I feel like time travel makes it feel like it's voluntary. It's involuntary time travel. So I would say it is. Uh, Anyway, 
let's do uh let's do something from the more recent games you know some of the games okay. that people have uh you know maybe a little bit more idea of uh this is from mm-hmm. uh legend of zelda 2 got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is from uh, oracle of seasons uh <laughs> it's a very good game actually I, oracle of seasons is fun um mm. I would so here's from uh, Breath of the Wild, right? I've heard of that one. Eating food, right? Uh, can prevent you from getting frostbite or prevent you from combusting, right? So it's the problem. <laughs> well, when you, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many peppers I eat, I won't be able to stand naked on a mountaintop and not die. Have you tried it? It's true. I haven't. Uh, and I guess whenever I eat a very spicy pepper, I do feel warmer. Maybe this isn't. Maybe this isn't such a. Maybe this isn't a <laughs> impossible thing. Maybe this is something you explain. It, it exists in our world. You know, when I drink ice water, I do feel colder. Mm-hmm, I don't know if it mm-hmm. makes me incombustible. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the the hard part is when it is so hot that your clothes and flesh catch on fire. <laughs> you melt uh <laughs> it's it's just like that scene from tower of inferno where that guy is melting oh wait that's not tower of inferno that's uh uh the, the that's movie. raiders of the lost ark that's also raiders of the lost ark i was gonna say the movie where there's a lava like there's a volcano in la yeah it's a weird movie there's a scene where a guy <laughs> is just standing there in lava and he's slowly burning to death and just the main character watches him for like five minutes well this is life <laughs> goodbye everybody i'm just gonna <laughs> kick it in the lava for a minute it's it, it's yeah it's a weird it's a very strange scene anyway <laughs> yeah so peppers keeping you from burning they keep you from burning oh sorry uh, peppers are the opposite peppers keep you warm. right so do we think that peppers are just like extra caloric intake or do we think that they like physically warm up inside you um i mean it could be both like maybe there's you know chemical that reacts in it that when it's metabolized it gives off heat in your insides i like it so then what about the the cold things the things that make you um uh, not catch on fire yeah yeah not catch. that on one's fire. more difficult um hmm i hmm. have an idea because it also okay. helps in the desert so maybe okay. the things that prevent heat damage <laughs> they just cause you to sweat a lot and give you a <laughs> lot of water to sweat out and so you're all slippery and moist and you don't catch on fire because your body is all wet. You're gross and sweaty yeah because you're all gross and sweaty <laughs> But nobody's touching you because it's like if you're if you're like imagine sleeping next to someone in summer and it's too hot. Imagine mm-hmm. being on a on a volcano and touching someone. <laughs> that would be unbearable. Right. So it doesn't it doesn't matter that you're all sticky and gross. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I I think that that works right. If I sweat enough, I yeah, can keep myself maybe. from burning to death. <laughs> That's and, the trick. Oh, yeah. Um. That's why sweating is the ultimate superpower. There's nothing. <laughs> I, I was playing. I was playing. Uh, I think I was playing Skull Wizard with somebody, and mm-hmm. they chose being able to sweat. Really? Oh no, no, no. That's right. Yeah, it was Skull Wizard. Polygon was playing Skull Wizard. It wasn't my game. It was Polygon's game. Uh, <laughs> and, and and one of the guys chose as his power to just be able to sweat real good. Mm-hmm. And his entire purpose was like, no one's gonna catch me. I'm gonna be really slippery. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be really slippery and gross so even if they wanted to catch me they can't there you go anyway that's what i'm saying i'm saying that's what the food does <laughs> um yeah i guess so long as you know it's assumed that you have water on hand i'm saying like like i think, for, I think like so it's sustainable yeah i think the food also contains water because the food doesn't mm. last forever like like it, the effects wear off eventually Right. Um, so I think the food contains water and it causes you to sweat profusely. Okay. Yeah. So it like has something that aids with the rapid uptake of that water. Yes. Okay. 
and then the rapid I expulsion like of that water. Well, I mean, that's also just being in a volcano. <laughs> I guess it is kind of the thing that happens when you're in a volcano. But, like, I'm saying, like, you have to be coated all the time in sweat. Yeah, we know how sweat works. Okay, I'm just saying. I mean, I don't sweat that much. I guess maybe you do. You don't live in my apartment. <laughs> it's true. Your apartment does get pretty uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I think it's like 85, 90 right now. That's insane. Yeah. It's it's like 40 degrees out. Yeah. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, let's do uh, let's do one more. We want to do two more? I don't know. Let's do one. Sure. More. Well, let's start with one. Let's not commit to two and so we have to solve time travel again. <laughs> uh, so uh, for some reason, it, it, there's a, always this in Zelda games. There's a trope that you get a gauntlet or a bracelet that allows right. you to pick up very heavy things. Right. And in the case of Ocarina of Time, you get well, a I, like that's gauntlet. just a. Uh, like the bracelets with magnets in them, right? That's what they do. I don't know how a bracelet with magnets uh, helps you lift something that's very. Heavy. Yeah, neither does anyone else. But those commercials really lean into the bit. I, is there? Is this seriously a thing? What? No. Oh well. I mean, I don't know if it's for lifting, but they say that it makes you healthy for some reason. Oh yeah, this is. I I don't know the don't know the bracelet, but I do know the rings. The, the, I think they're magnetic rings. Do they do rings now? Uh, I think they did rings I guess originally. Bracelets fell out of fashion. I don't know. I just remember that there's a Ross and Carrie where they where they talk about like rings that help you. Something. Oh like yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, no, this is not magnet rings. Magnet bracelets. Mm-hmm. This are b- r- regular bracelets or gauntlets. H- Handwear. I don't know. Uh, it's I like. Just, you know, just throwing it out there. Uh, I think it's a bad idea. Uh, what if it had, like, negative mass and was a wormhole? <laughs> uh, that's a starting point, maybe. Um, I was thinking that it's, like, uh, just rigid so you don't, like, <laughs> bend yes. your wrist bad <laughs> trying to lift it. That's what I was thinking, too. It was, like, a back brace <laughs> for, like, lifters. Yeah. yeah. Like, anyone can lift an entire obelisk, <laughs> but we would just break our wrists if we tried. Right. Uh, <laughs> just need real strong wrists or this bracelet. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know which one of those to work off of, because both of them are kind of bad. I uh, agree. I'm trying to think, like, what's the way that you could, like, is it like an exosuit suit? Scoot? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think maybe not exosuit, but exoscoot, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah, is it like a mechanical, like, is it like uh, uh, a mechanical advantage you're getting when you do this kind of thing? Uh, I think so. Well, yeah, because in, like, a bunch of the games, there's I know, think a so civilization too. that had advanced tech, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. In, in, um, uh, uh, Skyward Sword and uh, Twilight Princess, and in Breath of the Wild, I completely forgot about that one too. Mm. Yeah, I I think for sure. I so what so yeah. What if it's this? What if it's like, uh, it's not Link lifting the object, but instead <laughs> it's the bracelet lifting the object. The bracelet, no, but the bracelet's like a control mechanism for i'm i am so far away from my mic um (laughs) the the bracelet is like a control mechanism for i don't know like a tractor beam (laughs) (laughs) maybe link's just real sweaty and he like he just lubes up the rock that he's trying to move and just slides it out of the way yeah the bracelet's just there for show what if it's like invisible robots? I feel like we started off. But this it doesn't episode. necessarily have to be invisible robots. Maybe they're just real little. Like it controls like real a gray robots. ooze swarm of nanobots. Ah, gotcha. I thought you were gonna say, well, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. <laughs> they don't have to be little. But maybe they're all green screened, and you just can't see them. <laughs> 
they're just all made of glass and you can't see them. <laughs> there you go, the glass shark. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, we're bringing uh, all of our references to the, all the all of the other things we uh, listen to. Yeah. Are you still thinking? Didn't we solve I, it with glass robots? I think <laughs> I hate glass robots. <laughs> I want it to be better than this. I want there to be. I want there to be some kind of thing that makes sense. Mm-hmm. What if they? What if they contain like rocket rocket propulsion? <laughs> <laughs> you just hold on real tight. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, you will rip your arms off. Yeah, exactly. Like it is. Exactly. It is the weight of the rock that means you don't <laughs> rip yourself in half. Well, my, the other thing I really like about that is like you're you have rocket propulsion on your on the ends of your arms, so that means that like you're still <laughs> tethered to your body with your shoulder. So like, yeah, you're constantly making this loop with your arms. <laughs> I think that that's the best solution we've come up with. Better than glass robots, it's rocket I, propulsion. It's a little bit better than glass robots. Like it beats it out by a hair. <laughs> I, I, it's, yeah, I think Rock of is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially because the animation is like, the animation in, in Ocarina of Time, it kind of looks like he's like, got like Rock It has hands. secret glass robots, yeah. It's secret <laughs> glass robots. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see because they're made of glass, guys. How do they move? <laughs> that's, it, it, that's not in the game, okay? It, you can't, we can't explain that. <laughs> If we could see them, we could explain how they move. Exactly. We have no information on them because they just don't, you know, they're so hard to see. Mm -hmm. I I do like, I do like the idea that it summons a bunch of green screen, like guys, like (laughs) like overweight guys in like the the skin tight suits. And they're just like coming up and Link is just a team of power lifters. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. That's a hard one. I got to say. Being able to just suddenly mm-hmm. be very, very strong. Yeah. And, like, we know how strong Link is. Like, he lifts things many times his size in every game. Yeah. I don't know if you know yeah, this. Yeah, I think so. Probably like, most of them. Yeah, I can't think of a game where he doesn't get some kind Swole. of... Swole? Yeah, just jacked. We can end the episode at any point in time if you'd like. <laughs> Listen to <laughs> You can just turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were talking to me or the listener at that exact moment. <laughs> no, I just realized that, like, it's been an hour, and, you know, the listener's probably pretty tired, probably probably sick of hearing the voices. Right. Well, I mean, I don't think they all listen when we're recording in the middle of the night. Wait, this isn't live? No, I told you I was going to set that up next week. Oh, yeah, we're going to have our, uh-huh. our live episode. Uh, that will never happen because <laughs> Jeff and I because we can only figure out how to get one audio stream live and it's mine so it'll be a very quiet episode is that wait that would yeah that would not be a good episode well no it'd be periodically you chuckling to yourself as <laughs> I'm right. talking to you <laughs> chuckling to myself and just really adamant that it's glass robots <laughs> Yeah, listen, listen, guys. Whenever something incredible happens in a video game, just glass robots. There's always there's glass <laughs> robots everywhere. Mm-hmm. They just you they just dodge you and everything because they're also ninjas. And right, yeah, you know. And also, that's how it works in real life. Yeah, it's how it works in real life. Whenever you live, you actually are very weak. Uh, <laughs> but glass robots follow you around. It's like a genie, like you know the Greek version of a genie. Mm-hmm. Where it's like a thing that follows you. It's like a like a muse, but instead right. it's just something that lifts stuff for you. Just everyone gets their own bespoke glass robot. I mean, you know, you see it in little ways every day. Like yeah. anytime you go into a store that has a quote automatic door, it's just your glass robot. Just your glass robot, or like, uh, or like when you feel like someone's watching you and you you're alone. It's your glass <laughs> robot. Or your sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> your sleep paralysis demon? That's just your glass robot putting on something else's skin that it killed. And wants to show you. <laughs> that it killed protecting you. Yeah. 
And then it says, it says, look, I killed this for you. You're my friend. <laughs> and now I'm your sleep paralysis demon. You have to file to get a new glass robot. Yes, because I'm going to wear this thing's skin. That's it. Uh, glass robots all have a pact with you that they, they made with you when you were born to, mm-hmm. to, to lift things for you o- until they save your life. And then once they do, <laughs> you get a sleep paralysis demon and mm-hmm. you get a new glass robot. The people who get sleep paralysis demons like really frequently are the people who just like assassins, the interdimensional assassins are after them all the time. Well, I mean, I guess that's a good silver lining to my sleep paralysis demons. I mean, you're being saved. They, you have, yeah. Yeah, think about it this way. You got very ev- effective sleep uh, uh, glass robots. They are mm-hmm. on their job. They, they know what they're doing. That's good. They and do that their was, best. That was not a, an awkward thing to say when I had to avoid swearing just now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could hardly tell. I know there wasn't there wasn't any hesitation. I didn't have you know a moment of trying to think of what word go would would work here. <laughs> you got just replace all your curses with beans. Ah, That's what I did. Beans. Yeah, yeah. yeah they they really fun. know. They're really on their beans. They're really on their beans. <laughs> <laughs> Again, listener, you can just like skip. <laughs> <laughs> skip, skip I mean, you you know by now this is our outro. Uh, so find us <laughs> at any podcasting app. Yeah, uh, we're at the internet at pedanticandwavium dot com, which oh, I think actually just renewed. Hey. Haha, I believe you did too because it's yeah, it's like March twenty something, twenty fifth. Yep, uh, I it is March twenty fifth. I'm saying. <laughs> i'm saying when we, we were, started was yeah it was like march around like 21st when. yeah i think it's our mm-hmm. first episode yeah um what else we got we got the youtubes that we, we got, alluded to earlier we got youtubes yeah feel free to subscribe uh, to us we got three subscribers i'm one of them i think jeff is another one of them <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah uh, just don't feel bad about it you join the club early you know you don't get anything for it except for bragging rights and also notifications when we upload oh, new episodes if you I hit that bell true. icon hit subscribe and punch the bell or whatever they say on youtube yeah I'm not punch that bell punch it punch it hard <laughs> uh yeah. shoot i can't think of the oh, people Twitter. that sponsored everyone on youtube shadow raid legends or something oh yeah 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 it's uh, gonna make a joke I about raid, that now. i think it's raid legends legend raids I don't know. They didn't Whatever. draw Tron for a little yeah, while. Yeah, if we keep getting the name wrong, then <laughs> Bill, it won't matter Bill that they didn't pay it. us. <laughs> yeah. No, of course. Uh, what else we got? We got a Twitter. We got which a Twitter. is at P Handwavium. Yeah, you can tweet. You can tweet at us. Tweety yep. dog. That's what it's called. And I'll answer. I got nothing else to do. <laughs> Just in grad school, you know, normal stuff. Yeah, I mean, I would, trust me, I would love to be torn away from grad school. Oh, that's really gross. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway. Grad school will do that. Um, yeah, what else do we got? Was that it? I think we that's it. Uh, Yosef um, Sopcek is our theme music writer and performer. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, he didn't think he performed it. I think he did it on his computer. But Well, uh, his computer performed it. Yeah, so Yosef and Yosef's computer. Thank uh, you. I didn't make a single soft J joke this entire time, and I'm really proud of myself. Except for the Yosef stuff. <laughs> Except for the one time that you did do that four seconds ago. Well, I didn't do uh, Mayora's mask, which is how, what I call it. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, because I think e- English sucks because it doesn't have soft J, and soft J is the best. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it's also not a terribly consistent language. I know. I can do whatever I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever the beans I want. <laughs> You sure can. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that's it. Thanks for joining us, listener. We we really enjoyed having you. Uh, we enjoyed discussing our glass robots with you. Uh, yep. just not many opportunities to shoehorn those into everyday conversation. No. So thanks for thanks for being there. Thank your glass robot and future sleep paralysis demon. And good night. Your current glass robot and future (laughs) (laughs) sleep (laughs) robot.